our most excellent go with the flow lodge to lodge luxury kayaking adventure began on Quadra Island. We hooked up with Brad the Dad and Anne who would carry us to the go with the flow lodge on Morale Island aboard the Cosmo, a classic wooden hulled fishing boat. We were Peta and I, Sheila and Brian and Jeanne, a woman from Missouri who found her way to the wilderness off the British Columbia coast through the internet. We motored through the Breton Islands, up the Hoskane Channel, to the settlers group of islands in Surge Narrows, where the tidal flow over the shallow rocks becomes a raging rapid as the tide changes. We traversed the narrows at slack tide, which becomes a kind of gate allowing the boats to pass through a few times a day. Along the way, we admired the dramatic rocky shore with gnarly arbutus trees, seals and fish reaching the surface of the water. Brody's Bay is located just past Surge Narrows on the southern end of Morale Island. Brody Wilson is the outfitter guide who runs Go With The Flow Adventures with his wife Christine and help from Mike De Jong and Dominique Ballard. This is Journey, a beautiful big mixed breed mutt that had a passion for chasing rocks in the water. We got a new table this year. Whoa, that's gorgeous. Mm. On our tour of the lodge, we were introduced to a unique blend of raw nature and cozy comfort, polished with touches of whimsy. All of this sat very lightly on the land. Our cabins and the dining hall were nestled in the lush green forest, while the kitchen and hot tub were perched on the shoreline. We arrived a little after noon and were paddling Brody's kayak shortly thereafter. The following day, we paddled north a couple of hours to the Octopus Islands, where we visited the Driftwood Museum. Along the way, we saw a porpoise, eagles, loons, ducks, jellyfish, sea stars, sea cucumbers, nudibranch, and a deer marooned on the island. The intertidal zone is loaded with life. Seaweed, rock lettuce, nori, bull kelp, barnacles, mussels, clams, oysters, shrimp, and more. It occurred to me that Brody possessed the odd characteristic of not seeing obvious man-made objects, while relatively natural features stood out like beacons. When crossing a channel, he instructed us to head for the light green tree just below the rock cliff. While searching for that tree in the forest, I noticed that it stood very near a red and white Canadian flag that had gone unnoticed. It was this acuity for nature that allowed him to reveal all manner of wildlife along the way. One of these was a massive cedar tree, likely a thousand years old, that required seven people to wrap themselves around its massive trunk. Brody was born and raised as a child of the Back to the Land movement in the 1970s. His knowledge of the history and society in the area revealed many details that most guides would miss. 
Brody hacked the top and bottom off a bull kelp, and Peter blew a note that could have passed for a foghorn. third day, we left Christine and Dominique behind and paddled through the White Rock Passage between Reed and Morel Islands into the calm channel, which wasn't, and on to the Rendezvous Islands where we would spend the next couple of days luxury camping at the Solstua West Lodge. <laughs> this is the village. This is the village. This is the village. This, okay. is, the village. Right. Um, this is your coffee tea cabana. Okay, open 24 hours a day. Help yourself. The white trays are for the men to deliver to your partners in bed. Mm -hmm. Okay, yes. that's what they're for. We were joined there by Jan and Tom, who loaded themselves and their kayaks onto a water taxi for the trip from Harriet Bay. On the tour of the facilities, Karen Tonseth. The owner explained that her motto was, why suffer? The food service there was exquisite. The four-poster bed with a thick, comfy mattress was located inside a heavy-duty tent on a wooden frame platform and under a metal roof. Each tent cabin was perched high on a cliff overlooking the channel. They slept too and had a front porch with a spectacular view. Everything was kind of indoor-outdoor, the showers, the composting toilet, the dining area, the coffee tea room, and the tents. We paddled around the three rendezvous islands the following day and on the last morning. There was more wildlife to see, interesting homes, an abandoned boat building site, and of course the ever-present spectacular scenery. After each outing, we returned to a shower, comfortable clothes, and a great meal. Thanks to Mike, we now know that we were traveling through the coastal western hemlock biogeoclimactic zone that the birds that woke us up were varied thrush, and that the squirmy white things underwater were nudibronch, spelled like branch, but pronounced bronch. I did get the money shot of the eagle soaring and landing, however I did get a great uh, shot of a turkey vulture gliding through the air, but seagulls, I had this image of the western tiger swallowtail butterfly, got this uh, downy woodpecker, we had uh, lots of ducks, a mother merganser with her brood and uh, a whole sort of flock of Harlequin ducks and uh, caught them taking off. So there's lots of great wildlife. The fifth day, the Cosmo reappeared, and we all clambered aboard for the return trip to the Hibby, the Harriet Bay Inn. Sadly, our wonderful adventure had come to an end. <laughs>